Hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching in the world. This is the Wimbledon Coffee Morning presented by Lavazza, where every single player is in action on Manic Monday. I'm Danny Jameson. And I'm Amory Batson. On day six on the championships, there was a whole host of players here on court at SW19. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Middle Saturday of the Championships at the All England Lawn Tennis Club. Here it is, Serena Williams, the seven-time champion goes through to the round of 16, with the fans giving her a standing ovation. It wasn't really a contest, but he's done the business very impressively. Rafa Nadal through to the second week yet again. And she's done it. The last 16 at Wimbledon awaits. She was up against it, she was down and out, but she found something, and with a bit of help from the crowd as well, she has seen off slow speed. For the 17th time, Roger Federer can look forward to week two at Wimbledon. Yet another win for the eight times former champion. Some big games, some major names in action on Saturday. Now you might notice on our table, we have uh, every single day two faces on our cakes and we have roundly failed to mention them, much to the disappointment of our <laughs> producer Hannah, who very carefully selects two people that are appropriate. She so today does. We have Pistol Pete, Sampras and Billie Jean King, two great American champions. That, of course, is in honour of the US women's national team who became world champions in football yesterday. Now, what goes well with, uh, with a cake? A uh, cup of tea for me in my house. Oh, wrong. A coffee. Now, loads of people have been asking whether all this is real. No one's actually asked whether this coffee machine's real, have they? No, they um, haven't. We're going to prove it. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to attempt to make a coffee um, live on air. So Go for it. Let's, Explain what let's you're doing. see how it goes. Yeah, let's put that in there. Okay. Boom. Boom. There we go. Look at we're that. Away. And just by magic, it works. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about... Um, <laughs> Saturday then, there was, there was plenty of stuff going on. One thing I noticed floating around on social media as the coffee cracks on, Ash Barty, mm -hmm. is she slipping Disney lyrics into her press conferences? I don't know. This is causing a little bit of a stir on social media. We don't know if she's actually doing it intentionally or it's just one of those It's things. got to be intentional. I mean, she slipped, what do we hear? Hakuna Matata. Yes. And then there was a line from The Little Mermaid as well. The seaweed's <laughs> always greener in someone else's garden. <laughs> If that's not deliberate, I've never heard anybody use that phrase in, in normal parlance, shall we say. Yeah, I it. think, but that's oh, one to fun. watch later on. She's in action uh, today. She plays Alison Risk first up on court number yeah. two. Uh, one to watch later on in her press conference. Um, elsewhere? Yeah, we've had the groundsmen tweeting about that the first week is now complete and there's a lovely picture on their Twitter handle account showing Wimbledon in darkness, but all the covers over the court. Indeed, lovely stuff. Good morning, uh, Cynthia in Hong Kong, who's watching. Hello. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Uh, elsewhere, now, Middle Sunday, traditionally a bit of a day off. However, mm -hmm. our photographers, our snappers, were out on, uh, on the grounds having a little look around. And guess who they saw? Roger Federer practicing with, with um, some Spanish chap. Oh, yeah. I think his name's Rafael Nadal. Oh, absolute hey. legend. Look at that. The two of them. That's a fair few Wimbledon titles between, <laughs> between the two of them. Practicing together on, out on the practice course at Orangi. Never know who you might see on Middle Sunday. And potentially they could meet each other in the semi-final, but we're not going we're not to get ahead of ourselves. There's still a couple of steps to go before we get there. cracker, wouldn't it? <laughs> who else has been getting in touch with us as well? Anybody else? Uh, Would well, you know, there's a lovely message from Fiona Shields. Um, loveless broadcast every morning, really sets up the day. Oh, thanks, Fiona. Thanks. I'm glad we're, we can, we're providing a service. Glad you're enjoying it. Thank you so much for your message. Now, you, we'd love to hear from plenty more people who are watching. We would, absolutely. And how does somebody do that? Oh, well, there's so many ways. On your social media platform of choice, you could use the hashtag Wimbledon or the hashtag Join the Story. If you're on Facebook, well, why don't you get involved in our Facebook group, Wimbledon Join the Story. Uh, you can uh, post us your stories, tell us about... I don't know, what can you tell us about while I try and attempt to retrieve our coffee here? Right, you can tell us how much you're enjoying Wimbledon, which matches you're looking forward to seeing, to seeing as well as who do you think is going oh, to win those that. matches in the queue. Tell us what the atmosphere is like. And if you're coming to the Wimbledon Championships for the first time, again, tell us what that's like. It's all, you know, amazing stuff. And we will read out your tweets or your posts on the show and give you shout outs too. Now, how's the coffee looking? Is it's it good. looking? Now, I've gone, the, this is, none of this is a props, by the way. I've attempted to go for the, 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 bigger cup here just okay. because i thought it was safer for the, re the rest <laughs> of everything what, while you're pouring that here's a brief recap of saturday's action which each includes football skills sunscreen and a bit of unusual ball striking 
Should we get some of those sent up here? Oh, I feel so hungry now. And he obviously hasn't had time to get to the shop to buy a hat. I hope he's brought the crank. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah, well done, Dad. <gasps> Goodbye. Oh. It dropped in <laughs> after going around the frame a couple of times off the return. <laughs> Just a little smile there in the last. <laughs> Don't hit it near me. Gosh, that's what I need to be doing all that. <laughs> Goodness. Well, that's dangerous. Good thing he maintained his footing. <laughs> she showed some fancy footwork. First of all, with the left foot, and then look at that a half volley. What we need now is one off that headband for a hat trick. Oh, that's going to sting. <laughs> that might have been in the, the most painful area that there is. <laughs> so some commitments with American TV. <laughs> that does look pretty comfortable. Yeah. Uh, ooh. That, didn't see that one coming. No problem. Is that your best shot? Exactly. My cast iron stomach didn't even feel it. Lots of low flying projectiles on Saturday. If you manage to avoid all the tennis balls, well, the tennis player is flying as well, that poor ball boy. Yeah, and also that poor tennis player <laughs> as well, yeah. having to roll on the ground for a few minutes to recover, shall we say, <laughs> in inverted commas. How's your coffee? Uh, it's actually really good. Look at that. It's worked. I've, you've used the wrong size cup. Oh, that doesn't matter. But, coffee's coffee. Yeah. You know, it works. <laughs> So we've got some uh, social media posts that have gone out about the uh, Wimbledon in terms of it's not every day play gets momentarily interrupted by the Red Arrows. Yeah, the Wimbledon Q official Twitter account uh, getting a lot of cracking picture of the Red Arrows themselves flying over uh, flying over SW19. That's not a bad way to, to start a day, is it? Not at all. And the colours look amazing. And it's a fantastic shot. It is very, very British. British. It's a fantastic shot. Absolutely. Uh, plenty of players mm -hmm. making it through to week two. That's kind of a big milestone, it, it feels like, for, for a lot of people, particularly Petra Kvitova yes. as well. She tweeted a lovely picture of her, big beaming smile, very excited. Um, it's been a while, she says, since you reached the second week of Wimbledon. Yes, it has been a while for It has Petra. been a while. And she'll be facing our British number one, Johanna Conta, in a little bit, but we'll chat about that shortly. Yeah, we'll get marvellous Nick McCarvel will be here as always to tee you up for the day. Uh, yeah, nice to see you. Petra, very excited. Oh, do we have to talk about this next one? I've yes, just spotted it in our running order. We, yes, we do. Unfortunately, Danny's best mate, Joe Wilfried Songer, has left the competition at the hands of Rafael Nadal on Saturday. Yeah. But it was, it was a really entertaining match, but there was only one winner, and that was going to be Rafael. There uh, was only one winner in my heart, <laughs> Joe Wilfred. That's the actual, that's the reason we didn't have a show yesterday. If people were looking for it, I just locked myself in, in a dark room <laughs> and refused to come out. It was in mourning. Um, I did manage to watch a bit of this. Uh, Someone at one point, I think it was the second last game mm -hmm. when Song was, was serving, someone yelled out from the crowd, don't worry, Joe, it's not your fault. He's just too good, <laughs> uh, which got a big laugh from, from Joe as well. Brilliant. He, and he was true. N Rafa Nadal looked really, really, really good. Also, the um, right at the very end, I think it was about two points from, from the end, uh, after a big cheer, cheer, cheering him on to make it like 5-2 or something in the, in the final set. Um, as Rafa Nadal was serving, mm -hmm. Song threw himself for a diving volley to try and get it over. He hit his hand, landed sort of awkwardly, got up quite gingerly. Umpire was asking him, is he all right? Rafa was asking him, are you okay to continue? Yep. He was, and he, he carried on playing for the final two points of the match, but his thing, little finger was at a really, really nasty angle. Ouch. He, he managed to get a few returns back, then very gingerly shook hands over the net, even signed some autographs, but I, I think he dislocated it. Oh, he gutted funny. it out, he battled through, and then yeah, made his way off court to find some ice and yeah, probably have a little sit down, but fair play to him, and I'm okay. going to miss you, Joe. <laughs> oh, thanks for entertaining us, Joe. And by the yeah. way, Nathan has got in touch on social media saying hello as well, so hey, Nathan, thanks for saying hello to us. Indeed, yep. Yeah. Uh, plenty more where that came from yes, a bit later on when absolutely. we rattle through a bit of social media. But, you know, it's another day, it's another week, and it's a special day for two of the youngest players left in the draw. But in the words of Prince and sung by the Bengals, it's just another Manic Monday.
much going on. It's difficult to know where to start. Luckily, we've got the hey! man. Good morning. Manic 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 Monday. Back. Manic Monday. I'm so excited. It's actually being called Miraculous Monday, too, because Coco Goff, that was from Ian Chadband today in the Wimbledon program uh, because it's been a miraculous run for her, right? But Manic Monday is by far the best day in tennis. Everyone's playing all of our 16 round of 16 matches going on, and it's one of those days where you feel like you can't keep up with the tennis but that's a good thing yes. in a good way. There's too much good tennis to watch. And I think people watching at home, you guys all have your different systems. I'd love to know how you keep up with mm. the tennis. I'm guessing I a lot of people are, yeah, that. some <laughs> streaming devices you're watching on your iPad and TV. Yes. And there's a whole- Other, pa- other pa- iPads are available, of course, by the way. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Computer, iPad, iPhone. And then a TV. And then a yeah. TV. Throwback to yeah, a television. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Old fashioned. <laughs> uh, I said at the top of that it's very difficult to know where to begin. Luckily, that's where you come in. Shall yes. we start with the world number one, the men's side? Yeah, we certainly Last can. Last on, yeah. number one court, Novak Djokovic against the youngest man left, Ugo Umber. Yeah, Ugo Fabulous. Umber, Fabulous. who was uh, ranked outside the top 200 a year ago. Wow. He's the lefty. He actually had a big win over another young gun in Felix Auger Aliassime in the third round to get to this stage. And he's a guy who's, uh, I think he's worked really well with the French Tennis Federation to get to where he is now. He's ranked 66th. He'll reach a career high ranking after this tournament. He likes to play the piano and guitar, which I like uh, that he's got this artistic side to him to chill out uh, off the court. But today he's saying that he gives himself a chance. He might be why the not? only person that gives himself a chance <laughs> hey, today, not? but why not? No, you're right. He's a lefty. I think that bodes well for him against Djokovic, and he also played on that number one court against Felix, so he'll feel maybe a little bit settled in on that stage, Danny. But um, yeah, I, you know, Novak Djokovic, to me, of the big three, mm. he looked the best in week one, so that doesn't necessarily bode well for Ugo. Mm. Now, you mentioned the big three there. The other two are also in action, one of whom is your pick of the day. Yeah, Roger, I certainly. think this is the first time you've picked Roger Federer's Somehow. match. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Well, I've been picking his matches uh, quietly. He hasn't yes. quite made it to Nick's picks, but he is my pick today only because, well, one, because he's Roger Federer, mm-hmm. but two, because Matteo Berrettini is having a really slick uh, grass court season. He is 12 and 1 overall on the grass this season. He's played a lot of really good tennis. He's 13 and 4 on grass in his career. He won the title in Stuttgart and he's going up against the essentially the greatest grass court player on the men's side in the history of the game on center court. I just feel like with Berrettini, he could take the racket out of Roger's hand in the sense if he serves well and he moves around the court really well that he could kind of play that brash sort of tennis similar to me to Stefano C pass and the way that he knocked out Federer in four sets at the Australian Open earlier this year. I think Berrettini, he doesn't necessarily have as much groundwork to work with, but he's now inside the top 20. Um, and he's just a guy who he saved three match points against Diego Schwartzman just behind us on this court 18 uh, in the third round. And he's going to give himself, I like these young guys giving themselves a chance against the top yeah. the top oh, players. Put it out on his Instagram as well. Dream come true to face, uh, to oh. face Roger. Do, yeah. do you think Fantastic. he can mm. take a set off Federer? Yeah, no, I, th- I think, yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, it is my pick today because I honestly feel like this could be a tough match for Roger. He hasn't really been tested through the first week, and Berrettini's playing next level. You talk about different levels of tennis. He's playing top-level tennis right now, and I think that's a little dangerous for Raj. No, the other member of that big three, Rafael Nadal, came through against Joe Wilfrid, who's in my bad book. Yeah, how are you he, feeling? Oh, not good. Not <laughs> he hasn't good. recovered. Genuinely. You had a day to recover, though. Yeah. I spent it genuinely locked in a room <laughs> in the dark, crying. Uh, but he plays uh, Joao Souza, yes. who uh, was an absolute epic against Dan Evans mm. late on the, oh, on Saturday night. Was, yeah, was, it was too bad for crushing, Dan Evans. Yeah. It was an amazing atmosphere yeah. on the number one court. But, you know, listen, for Rafa against Souza today, uh, you know, on center court, I think that for me, overall, Rafa's looked really good. Souza might be a little bit tired from that five-set match. I just don't think he necessarily has the weapons, whereas Dan Evans was going to give him some slice and dice and really move the ball around the court. But to me, Rafa is the heavy favorite in this one. Uh, do you know, one man that we realized this morning we'd barely mentioned, despite being seeded eighth, is Kane Ishikori. <laughs> yeah. He's not dropped a set yet either. 
And actually, at least from what I understand, it's the first time he's made it to the fourth round at a major where he hasn't dropped a set yeah. in a completed match, which is insane <laughs> for him. Um, nishikori has been under the radar, right? And actually plays Mikhail Kukushkin today. And Nishikori, they've met eight times, you guys, and Nishikori has never lost a match. And he's only dropped two sets in eight matches played. That's big against Kukushkin. But listen, Kukushkin's a veteran. He's been around for a long time. He had a great win over John Isner and then backed that up by beating, uh, he beat Jan Leonard Struff in the previous round. And he also was a trendsetter long before Andy Murray hired Amelie Moresmo. Kukushkin was coached by his wife, Anastasia. Oh, fantastic. Right now he currently doesn't have a coach, but she's the one that's kind of always in his ear. Um, so yeah, I think Nishikori could, that could be a banana peel for Nishikori today. But you're right, we haven't spoken much no. of him. I think that's kind of how he likes it. He's getting enough attention yes. from you <laughs> Japanese <laughs> yeah. fans and the Japanese yeah. broadcasters, yes. right? I mean, we they're were talking everywhere. About that. They are absolutely everywhere. And I think I, that's my upset of the day, I think. As much as I love Nishikuri, I think he's going to come up a cropper mm. in that match, I think. Yeah, no, that's a good good shout. Actually, my upset of the day could be Guido Pella taking out Milos Raonic oh. because Pella's been playing some fantastic grass court ball. He took out Kevin Anderson. He had maybe the point of week one on center court to set up match point. Milos Raonic has looked really good so far. He was actually long ago my pick to win Wimbledon. I, I scooted over to Team Federer before the tournament started, <laughs> but that could be a really good one because these courts are playing a little slower. Pella's a lefty, he's a clay court specialist, and he just seemed, we, we interviewed him on Wimbledon Channel on Saturday, just seems really chill, mm. which I think is good for him. Okay. Shall be interesting mm. indeed. Now, on the winning side, well, Simona Halep is involved in one of the matches of the day. She's also a cracking follow on Instagram. We tracked her down to take us through some of her favorite shots. I'm Simona Halep and this is my photo booth. She's uh, the superwoman. She's my mom. She's a wonderful person and uh, I thank her for her support. And I had a nice uh, walk with her in the city in Bucharest and I decided to have a selfie with her. This t-shirt is uh, Gheorghe Hagi's t-shirt, former football player, the best one in Romania. Uh, he was my model when I was very young, actually when I was a kid. I met him for the first time at 10 years old, played tennis with him. Uh, he inspired me a lot and uh, I copy, I can say, uh, his ambitions and uh, the way he trained, the way he worked all life. Perfect 10. Uh, Nadia is um, the best gymnastic that we ever had and I think uh, all, uh, all over the world because she was the first 10. After my uh, French Open title, I um, asked her to take a picture with me. She's coming uh, every time she has the chance uh, to see my matches and uh, she enjoys the time uh, watching tennis and um, I thank her for coming and for the support. She is the perfect 10 of my life <laughs> in this moment, my niece. I spend a lot of time when I go back home with her and uh, I enjoy it maximum. So she's lovely. Yeah, so Simona Halep giving us her thoughts about her photos, but also she's a prolific social media user and she's put out a lovely post on Instagram, a touching tribute to Darren Cahill, mm. Cahill her former coach. Yeah, nice, happy to see they've, him come out. Yeah, they've got a great relationship since they finished working together. Obviously, he helped her win the French Open last year, and they kind of had a roller coaster relationship when he was on court with her. But he was in uh, Romania a few weeks ago. She had a, her first ever exhibition. It was sold out. He was there. They were having fun. He's here for ESPN as a commentator. And I think he's still a voice in her ear as well as far as just those little things. She's now working with Daniel Dobre, who she worked with as a junior. He's been a great coach for her. But it's nice to see, you know, a professional relationship that's obviously over at this point. It continues on. You think of these people, you think of these players as people, and that that relationship has stayed strong. Speaking of Simona Halep, she your pick of the day? Yeah, she is. I mean, how could yes. she not be? Yes. Today, it's Coco Goff against Simona Halep. Obviously, this is their first meeting. This match, I would have loved to see it on center court. It's going to be great on the number one court. But Coco Mania, I mean, it's been Coco, Coco Nuts. Coco Mania. It's been yeah. Coco Very Nuts. Good. Well, that was stolen from a lot of the American broadcasters are saying it's been Coco Nuts. And just the fact that she's into the fourth round, she saved those two match points against Polona Herzog. And today, she's just got a swing for the 
defenses. I mean, definitely you'd say Simona Halep is your favorite for this match, the second match on the number one court. But it re it's reminiscent to me a little bit, you guys, of a Amanda Anasimova at the French Open yeah. a few weeks ago took out Simona Halep when no one thought she could in the quarterfinals to make the semis. And, you know, Coco Goff doesn't have as much of a track record as Anna Samova, but if she goes out there and bruises the ball the way that she has been so far this tournament, you'd give her a, an ample chance against Simona because Simona's game hasn't necessarily always bloomed on the grass. And I also think if she's got a powerful opponent against her, they can hit through her. So you'll see, we're, it's going to be interesting to see how Coco, because she was kind of just floating through <laughs> week one, right? We were all obsessed with the story, but in the the last 48 hours it's gotten even bigger and all of that attention and social media and she's been checking her phone on Instagram you just wonder today maybe it catches up with her but so far she's been miraculous mm -hmm. as Ian Chadban puts it and I think that the miracle could continue today oh there's so much support for her isn't there on Facebook awesome. and Instagram just right across social media mm. it's really and I kind of feel sorry a little bit for Simona Hallett because if it doesn't go Coco's way. Sure. She doesn't mind, though. Doesn't I mean, mind. yeah, I see what you mean, Emery. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Simona's the ultimate professional. Yeah. She's just going to play her match. She knows that the crowd's going to be with Coco. And I think, actually, Simona kind of feeds off of that. Yeah. I think it'll behoove her. I think it'll help her today okay. a bit. Uh, Joe Conta, Britain's number one, is on centre court later, taking on Petra Kvitova. This is a tough one because I think the crowd are going to be split because Kvitova has a lot of love here. She does. But then Conta is the British number one, and it's the home soil match. Yeah, you're right. It could be pretty split. Yeah. I didn't think about that. That. You know what? This is my favorite matchup of the fourth round. It's not my pick of the day only because you've got Coco <laughs> Nuts, but I think today for Kvitova against uh, against Kanta, they've played four times prior. Uh, Kvitova's won all three of those, or three of those four matchups. Um, today could be really, really good. Kanta looked so impressive against yeah. Sloane Stevens. Flawless, the way that she, described. the way that she, yeah, the second two sets especially, she came back in that match, which I thought was huge for her. But Kvitova, I think tennis quality has been one of the best players. When you look at, you know, if you look at it sort of from a golf scoreboard, I think she's leading after week one. And so I think if you put her into week two against Kanta, this could be a cracking match. I'm really, really looking forward to it. It'll be high quality tennis, the women's game at its best. You've got a big server, a lefty against the home hope. It'll be fantastic for sure. I love the way you just described it as a cracking match. He's been in this country for <laughs> I know, too This is my seventh Wimbledon. <laughs> I'm speaking the speak. We're, we're Britishing you up. Uh, yeah, totally. Elsewhere, we've got the, the world number one out on court two today, Ash Barty. Um, she's against Alison Risk. Um, Barty's been not really been tested too no, much. She she's hasn't. flown through week one. Is this going to be a little more tricky? It will be, yeah. Alison Risk is one of the few grass court specialists on the women's side. And actually, they've played once before. It was three years ago at a challenger event because this is when Ash Barty was coming back to the pro game from going and playing cricket. And actually, Alison Risk won that match on grass. So you just wonder for Alison, she's got that in the back of her head. She won a, uh, her first grass career title a couple weeks ago in uh, the Netherlands, beating Kiki Burton's. She's someone that just stays with you. She keeps the ball low that's why it works well on grass and she certainly could be a tough test today for Ash Barty I really do think if Ash Barty plays her game she's going to be your winner today but this could be a dangerous spot for her, especially early in the morning. You know, it's Monday, you haven't played in a couple days, you're getting ready, but yeah, definitely the favorite is Ash Barty, but watch out for Alison Risk. And straight after that, we have Karolina Pliskova against her checkmate, uh, Karolina Muchova. Yeah, Muchova. Can't see her putting up much of a fight. Oh, you were waiting the whole show for that. Basically, I only want to talk about this match just for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's uh, much to be made of Mukova, who's, who she was ranked outside the top 200 a year ago, and she's someone that plays an all-court game. So you've got Pliskova, who's so powerful and just, again, hits the cover off the ball. But Mukova is crafty. She doesn't play tennis like anyone you've seen before. She moves really well. She's She kind of floats on the court, maybe Federer-esque out there. That could be a dangerous match for Pliskova. They've played once before at the Australian Open. It was Pliskova who came through. And again, I think she had a solid week one. I think her win over Sue Shea in three sets, that'll set her up well against Mukova today. But um, we just have so many good <laughs> matches today, you guys. It's wall to wall, I mean, isn't it? My two picks, you could have made essentially 13 out of the 16 matches you just have to tune in today and Mukova is definitely one of those we have to mention Serena Williams at all of course taking on Carla Suarez Navarro 
Uh, one-sided, I think, yeah, is the, the way to describe the head-to-head. -head. Head. Whoever wins that match will either meet Ash Barty, yep. of course. So it's it's the next one, isn't it, to see who's going to... Yeah, Everyone it's... wants to see Serena against Ash, Ash Barty, Barty in yeah. the quarterfinals. We know that. But I think today for Serena, she's 6-0. and She's never dropped a set against Suarez Navarro. But Suarez Navarro is a veteran. She's been around for a long time. She's got that beautiful one-handed backhand. She's going to go out and give herself a chance today. Serena looked so convincing against Julia Gerges in the third round but it's still going to be a test for Serena even though she's got that 6-0 head-to-head even though she's never dropped a set Suarez Navarro is playing good tennis right I yeah. mean you don't get to the fourth round of a major and you're not playing solid tennis so yes Serena's definitely the favorite there but uh, Carla's been around enough she's won some big titles in her career she's going to give herself a chance I think she uses that one-handed backhand that slice to neutralize Serena's power and that's uh, that's a type of ball that Serena wouldn't like on the grass and yeah, we'll see what happens. Now, we got Reds together this morning to try to pick a, an upset of the day oh, on the women's side. Yeah, I think we in. settled on Barbara Strickova against Elise Mertens on 12. That's a great shout. Yeah. You Is guys. that the one you had as well? I mean, <laughs> tennis experts. Oh, I love this. You know, Strickova, listen, she's a former semi finalist here, or quarter finalist rather. It might be her last Wimbledon. Strickova has said oh, she, really? this might be it for her. Yeah. She's playing standout tennis. She's so fun on the court, much like Mukova. She moves well, she uses every angle. She's a great volleyer. She's one of the top doubles players in the world. Elise Mertens has won their only previous meeting. Um, this is the first matchup on my favorite court. Thanks for bringing it up. Welcome. 12. Um, I just think this could be a fantastic one. Again, one of the many matches today that you have to look out for. And yes, you definitely give. I like that. I'm going to go. Let's go for the first time on Coffee Morning. We're all agreeing yeah. with one we another. Are all agreeing. I think Strichova is going to beat uh, Mertens today. Oh, yeah, interesting. She's a great character she as well. Is. We saw from Instagram just there, hanging on literally to the net as well as hanging on into, <laughs> She's the into best. week two. She's, She's so fun. Cool, yeah. cool and character. actually, a former, a really good figure skater. She picked no tennis way. over figure I skating. Didn't know that. Yeah, when she was in her early teens. I mean, I cover figure skating as I well. Say, I would have thought uh, for yeah, her to cover. be <laughs> double dipping. Um, she, will, she will not be doing any triple sow cows today on court. <laughs> now, moving on to uh, a few other bits and pieces. Judy Murray was getting right into the mixed doubles on uh, on Saturday yeah, night. Got was. her popcorn and her Prosecco Amazing. ready. I mean, how cool was that moment? I mean, I wanted to be sitting next to Judy Murray. I wanted some pr Prosecco and popcorn too, but it's so cool. You know, no matter what we're calling Serena and Andy as a, a partnership, I watch a lot of their highlights from this match. I also watch their press conference. It is iconic to see two of our great champions in tennis playing alongside one another. And what an atmosphere when they walked oh, out to brilliant. center court. Amazing. It was so fantastic. And uh, Jude Moo, we're right there alongside you cheering <laughs> these two on. It's so cool. I think Andy's accepted Sir Andy, by the way. I think he is, is he's officially came he's back decided. And said that she likes Marina, I think it is. Yeah. Uh. So I think it's up for debate because people had settled on Sir Andy, S E R, by the way, Serena, Andy. Mm. But um, Serena's pushed back at that. So maybe they'll hash that out on the court. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, as ever, thank you oh, thank ever you guys so, so much. much. Enjoy Joy Manic, Manic Monday. Monday. If you have your Joy Manic iPad, Monday you. your laptop, uh, you know, your phone, your TV, <laughs> watch it all on the Wimbledon social channels oh, because this truly is, it's like Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Birthday, Happy Manic freaking Monday here at Wimbledon. <laughs> echo, echo all that. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, and we will guys. see you tomorrow, of course. Now. I am absolutely terrible about taking photos on my mobile phone, but thankfully there was a young man here by the name of Jed, one of the official photographers of the tournament, who took me around the grounds and showed me a couple of tips how to get that perfect photograph on my mobile phone. So many of you have been sending in some great photos into our Coffee Morning Show, but of course, what makes a great photo? And I've got no idea. So I'm going to ask Jed, one of the official tournament photographers, to give me a hand in a bit of a masterclass using a mobile phone. How's it going, Jed? Fine. How are you? Really well on this very, very hot day. So members of the public here may not have such high-class equipment such as yourself mm -hmm. as, a, as a professional photographer. They may use their mobile phone. What's the one piece of advice if they're using a mobile phone to take a photo with to get started? Um, I would say use the beautiful weather, yep. sunlight that we've got today, and use the beautiful backdrop that we've got in front of us. Yes. And then we'll have a walk and see what we can find. Good, brilliant. Where should we go first? Uh, I would say let's go in front of the clubhouse. Let's go there. So we've chosen our best position. We've moved around a couple of times, but I think this is a great place to get a shot. Jed, talk me through. Um, well, we've come around to the front of the clubhouse because it's a beautiful day. The sun is on it, the ivy is looking perfect, the flowers are looking even better, and we've got the uh, clock and the scoreboards there, and it's a perfect 
emblematic Wimbledon image to start with, basically. Brilliant. Okay. So let's do it. Let's do it. Now, Jed, you brought me over to court 11, and a certain world number one, Novak Djokovic, is currently on court. That's why it's so busy over there. Mm -hmm. And some members of the public have, are using their mobile phones to get shots of a play, of this player. So, how would they go about that? Well, I would argue that these uh, people here are highly intelligent individuals because they've come to this side of the court to be able to see the clubhouse. Okay. And uh, luckily for them, uh, today, Novak's come out to an outside court to knock up. And we can see, we can just see him in the background doing some serves. Oh, I can with, see him, yeah. With per the perfect clubhouse in the background. That's a great shot, and there actually, he is. yeah. Hold on. Coach is in the way. There we go. Serving shot. There you go. I notice sometimes you tap the screen before you take the photo. Why should I do that? Uh, well, this, this particular mobile phone, to do the focus and the exposure, I tap the screen every time just okay. so it knows what it's looking at. And then we'll get some nice fluffy clouds. We've still got centre court in the background. And we've got a lovely order of play board in the sun. Something's just popped into my head. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking you and I should get a selfie done together. What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Jed, we're on number one court. We're in the special photographer's booth, which is a really pri privileged position to be. Why is it such a privileged position? Uh, this is called the pillbox, and it's the uh, corner of number one court. It's effectively where the players walk in before they walk towards their chairs uh, and you get a very good angle uh, of play especially with left-handed players and you also get uh, when the players walk off sign autographs here and walk literally inches from our face. The occasion and the tradition is brilliant and the sporting event is unmatched. Jed, thanks so much for taking Thank me you. around. I think I've definitely picked up some tips, hope you guys have too and look forward to seeing your photos for the Coffee Morning Show. It was really lovely to meet Jed and for him to take me around the grounds and get some really fantastic shots. And I now understand about getting context mm. and background and colour, which I will definitely be Your doing. Your Instagram had better be absolute fire yes. from now on. No pressure I'm on me. I'm watching it. No <laughs> pressure on me. Now, Lorraine's got in contact on Facebook, hasn't she? Yeah, Lorraine Holden watching uh, Ash Barty, I think, today, watching her all the very best. Go, girl, she says. Really love watching her play. Lots of Australians uh, will be staying up. It'll be late into the night, won't it? It will be. It'll be, be late very into late into the night. Hope it's worthwhile. Get your, get your coffee and make sure you, you, you hang around because that should be a really good match, as Nick was saying. Absolutely. And we should also say that the grounds have now opened and mm. Hemman Hill is starting to fill up behind us. Yeah, it's getting very busy. Lots of really good tennis um, to watch from up there. I mean, as we say, Manic Monday, this is, might be one of the best uh, messages we've got from Seelan. She's never thought I'd be doing this, but I've been queuing since 4 a.m. Oh. Got an Uber at 3 a.m., been up since 2 a.m., probably fall asleep halfway through the day, but so excited to finally experience Wimbledon. I mean, of all the days to do it, this is the one. I mean, you are, like we were saying, wall-to-wall, -wall, top class tennis today, pretty much every court. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Hope it was worth a really, really early morning. Absolutely. And one of those players that's going to be on court today is Coco Goff. Oh, there's only been one story in town, hasn't there, all last week. Coco Goff, absolutely extraordinary. Here is her story last week through the eyes of social media. Let's go, Coco, let's go.
it feels like we talk about Coco Goff all the time, but that's because she's absolutely blown everybody away. My mum was asking me all sorts of questions about yeah. her yesterday when I spoke to her. My grandma's obsessed with her, <laughs> absolutely obsessed. <laughs> Hello, Adam. Hello. How yes. are you? Good morning. How was your day off? Did you enjoy a nice yeah. rest and relaxation? Chillaxing. I was yeah. in mourning because Joel with Songa got knocked out. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Got we're, back and we're back at it. Yes. Monday's here. Manic Monday. Manic just seen Monday. the bangles are sat on court. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to be singing all that, aren't we? Um, now, listen, over the, over the weekend, probably the most viral moment of the championship so far, Coco Goff's mum. Well, there's two good gifts that I've seen. There's the one where she's, yeah. you know, pounding her chest and the and one where the, she's going like that, that and that one like that. There's a few really good ones out there. Um, <laughs> I mean, they've gone absolutely crazy viral. I loved in a um, press conference she said it as well. She sat down and was like, oh my goodness, is my mum a meme? meme? I can't yeah. wait to go on Instagram. That's yeah. brilliant. Her social media numbers have just gone through the roof. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I meant to check what the, you know, how many she's gone from and to, but um, I think it's a, a fair a fair increase. Oh yeah, it's absolutely exploded. And to be fair, she's, she's good on it as well. She's doing her Insta, Insta stories. Well, she's capturing that audience. You know, she's capturing a completely different audience, just yes. her age, 15 yeah. years of age. You know, she's capturing a demographic that, that tennis, I guess, in, in the past has, has found it difficult to reach, which is which is good for the sport. Absolutely. Easy to see why she's so popular. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we've been asking our viewers to get in touch by sending us their stories using the hashtag join the story. What do we have? Yeah, on the uh, on the old Facebook group as well. There's, there's so many good ones. I keep checking it every so often, and I'm overwhelmed by the number of really cool stories. I like this one from Jackie Roberts. Uh, her daughter and I thoroughly enjoyed our day on Centre Court yesterday. What a fabulous lineup! The added bonus of Andy and Serena playing double. Well, that was the thing. Centre court on Ooh. Friday and Saturday. Well, both those days, brilliant order, particularly Saturday, because you got that. Yeah, as I said, they got the bonus of of watching Andy and Serena. I think, I mean, throughout the day, we kind of knew that the way that the the matches were were panning out, that that was what was going to happen. But it wasn't announced until quite late on. I think they'd realised that with what happened with Coco Goff the, the previous day, everyone was saying, "Oh, Andy's definitely going to go on centre court," and it didn't happen. So. Uh, you know, they held their horses a little bit, but it, when it was announced, there was uh, a bit of a hubbub around the grounds. Um, hello to Valerie, by the way. Mm. She's got her housework done. She's looking forward to the tennis. That's a good place to be in, isn't it, at this time of the morning? Housework out of the way. Well, at least the housework's finished. It's not a building site and she yeah. didn't hear the TV, because <laughs> I know it's going to be a bit um, loud. Uh, it wasn't just fans, though, getting in touch no, either. a certain Billie Jean King. Billie Jean King. What a great photo. Her alongside uh, Roger Federer. Congratulating uh, Federer. This story actually got lost a little bit in, in all of the Coco Goff, the comeback for her against Herzog, but Federer recorded his 350th Grand Slam singles uh, match win, uh, and Billie Jean King was there congratulating him. Absolutely outstanding, she says, and I think what? I agree with that. Yeah. The photo or the achievement? Both. Oh, both, both. both of them are, are very good indeed uh, now this might be my favorite one from uh, over the weekend robert lindstedt he's in doubles action uh, last week so he played against coco goff and jay clark now mm. uh, robert lindstedt he's, he's been around the block a few times and he pointed <laughs> pointed out don't know whether this is more impressive or depressing because he was playing with ostapenko as well yes not that old uh, yeah early but, 20s isn't she yes, but yes. He, he totted it up he is 27 years older than one of his opponents <laughs> And older than both of his opponents combined. I Goff particularly and Jay enjoyed the, the, child, uh, the uh, hashtag my children. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's brilliant. <laughs> however, were they calling him dad? I don't know. I'm not sure. However, experience beat youth. It beat worked. They went, he they? went they through. Won. So, yeah, made him feel very old indeed. I <laughs> see. Uh, one person we've got to talk about is Nick Kyrgios. Mm -hmm. uh, back on social media about his work that he's been doing with Eleni, uh, the Elena Beltacha Foundation. Yes, so he was spotted at the um, middle Sunday. He was down at the uh, practice courts, which is you know great in itself to see the players coming in and, and supporting the charities. And he was speaking to some of the kids that are involved with the the foundation. You know, talking about his career as a tennis player and you know just giving a bit of time back. And there was a nice photo of him. Uh, with the the three youngsters there so you know really nice to see it, whenever a player gives mm -hmm. even a couple of minutes of their time to, to yeah. help the, the, the younger generation and good to see Nick doing that yeah, too. He, he does a lot of charity work as much as his persona I suppose is is that of, you know the stereotypical bad boy he does a lot of stuff for charity he is a very good heart he just doesn't talk about and it and he has his well. own foundation yep. too as well doesn't he so yeah all good work also Albert Dean's got in touch on the join the story in the Facebook group yeah um, so we like we love animals Anything, dogs, cats, or in this case, <laughs> rabbits. Bunnies. Yeah. Brilliant. It's da Albert's daughter's rabbits have had the celebrity status <laughs> to be achieved by playing tennis. So getting a bit of practice in, after, uh, offering to practice with a recently paired team doing well at Wimbledon. Oh, Don't come amazing. cheap. Only eat the best hay. Partial to some strawberries as well. 
I wonder how they hold the racket though. That, you might get some dents in yeah, the lack grip. Lack of opposable there. thumbs. It's going to cost. Could them be an there, issue. Isn't it? Could be an issue. Uh, and also mm -hmm. the queue. The queue's cool. Like if you've never been in the queue, we say it's not just about the tennis. I suppose it's not just about the tennis that goes on on the ground. Big community here. out there. Yes. Yeah, the friendships that have grown from it as well in the queue. And as we can see from the, the post, people playing tennis in the queue as well. There's loads of this goes on. Yeah. Loads of this it's out there. It's quite good for free stuff as well, the queue. <laughs> I remember when uh, when we queued a few times with my school friends. We were in there for so long. We, you know, we come really, really early in the morning and there's a lot of companies going around giving out free things like sun hats and bags and sun cream, you know, all sorts of things. And by the, e by the end of the, the queue, your possessions have doubled in <laughs> size because you've accumulated so much free stuff, which is quite good. I just really like that that picture, the uh, the innovation, I suppose, of making a net out of what looks like a lilo or a, a, it looks like a lilo. air a bed or something yeah, like that. It's really, really quite good. Um, <laughs> Adam, you're off to uh, you're off to your uh, your duties on the Wimbledon Channel. Wimbledon is Channel. today as busy for you as it is for all of us? Yes, Manic Monday for us is is arguably the busiest day of the of the tournament for us because everywhere you look, you know, you've got matches going on, um, which is great. It gives us plenty to talk about. It quiets down a little bit after this, but today today for us is you know really really busy day. I'm about to get my head in the books and, and do my preparation although one thing you can you can see on my sp social media I've just posted it at Adam Hunt Sport on Twitter nice, nice, nice plug nice. bit of promo there um, <laughs> is the guy dressed as centre court have you seen this no we haven't seen it yet so this is the man who comes yes. dressed in a different costume so every this, single year yeah, costume man is here Great. he's on the grounds we've seen him got a photo of him I put it on Twitter and he's dressed as centre court and it is absolutely brilliant that is oh, extraordinary we'll check it out for sure Adam many thanks for your time enjoy Manic Monday as much as you can and we will see you tomorrow and that is it from us it is indeed the the, uh, the grounds are open the tennis is about to start you can follow all of Manic Monday as we we're saying on the Wimbledon channel you can find it on YouTube on Wimbledon.com or on the app if you have your smartphone it all kicks off from 11 o'clock Adam will let you go thank you so much for being with us and uh, yeah we'll be back exactly the same time tomorrow but until then goodbye <laughs>